but we do see the sieves for the next matchup. We do see the map for the next matchup. So I believe we're going to be getting this game started here in the next little bit. And we will see who is uh, going to be battling out for the king of the hill and continuing this little win streak. Yeah. And we are set to start this up. Azushi on Prairie. I didn't expect that. The, and the this Mongols is one where I, obviously, the Mongols I saw coming. But I did not expect Mongo, I was about to say, if anyone knows the players at hand, we all know the first choice, the number one choice for Philly over there. It's always the Mongols. Yeah. Um, Zushi, though, I'm just, I'm at a loss for, because I just, I don't know. I believe it is because Wham might know that exactly what's coming, and he's just going to drop a barracks. And this is one where I love seeing it's going to be Spears versus Spears. But really, this is where the intricacy is really the key um, about the spawn. So, like, you think about it, Phil's Berto is able to double produce. Wham can always match the production, but he has to spend the full amount. So it's kind of this, like, who's going to stop producing first? And then the person who stops producing where, you know, is it Philly and he's going to lose the Uvu or is it Wham and his gold's going to get pressured? Fortunate thing about this map is your gold is in your TC range. Yeah, and it's also a big gold that you don't have to worry about moving out at any point. Um, oh, yeah, this is... Uh, okay, so hear me out. I actually have another idea on why he... on why Wham went with... went with the Sith, okay? Let's um, hear it. So the... the one of the big hallmarks of Prairie is that it has very little wood. We have this tiny little patch in the base, this tiny little one in the back, right? Song Dynasty reduces your wood cost of buildings. Mm, good point. You're saving yourself that vital hard resource that is always the one that it feels bad on this map. It's why English, Rue, sieves like that is one that it never feels that great because you can see these wood lines. There's very little wood. It's very spread out, very easy to raid. Vulnerability is at an all-time high. Yeah, I think that I actually think that might be that might be the thought process that Wham has here with picking this sieve. Um, oh, we might see a little sheep steal here. Oh, Grand, the Grand Theft Up. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Obviously, this is a map that usually doesn't matter as much. Both players should have double-digit sheep circling around, but it's always fun to just know when you got one snagged away directly from your opponent's TC. Oh, yeah. And despite that, uh, despite that, uh, um, or because of that, rather, uh, Philosberto has one more sheep than Wayne, actually. So it, it just barely works out. And we do, uh, we do have the... Barracks doing oh, double production cool. stuff. Here, by the way. Do you think uh, Do you think Phil's Berto typed 106 in the chat and did the nice sheep command? Oh, or if, if, you... if, if anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be Phil's Berto. Yeah, Let, yeah. Let's I mean be... it's one of those. You, you know, you're playing against someone who's obviously favored better than you a little bit. You know, play the mind games, have some fun with it, get in his head a little bit. And speaking of. The spears are being produced by Philly. They're moving across the map. There's a villager, no villager trailing that I see. So not going with the outpost follow-up. He just wants spears to move out and cause a reaction from Wham, who is reacting. He drops a barracks, but no spearmen produced yet. Again, there's no no villagers that are outside of TC range right now. So, so what are these spears going to do? Yeah, I, I I like the idea of like not actually going with the tower and just like doing some harassment with spears in a lot of in a lot of cases. I think this is one of the only maps you can't do this because of how everything is so condensed at the start. You have to have a tower. So I don't know what Phil's Verda was gonna do. I don't know if he I don't know if he knows what he's gonna do, but. He has no, technically he's same. just now sending a villager out. Oh, it's a little okay. bit late, considering if he had walked there with the spears, he could already been building this outpost. We just saw him use the um, scouting falcon, so he's able to see how many spears Whams has, and he's, he's going to realize here in a second, he doesn't have the numbers anymore. Not here, not at the front line. And that's a pretty scary position point to find yourself in if you're moving out with a villager and... I think he actually brought the villager back home. Yeah, I, I so yeah, oh, I don't, 
I don't know. So, I, so this is where I was talking about. I think Philly is actually doing the correct mind game where he's he's been using single production some, but also double producing. So if Wham and him have equal numbers, he will be the first to feudal and by a significant margin because Wham is paying full price for all of these. Well, and not only that, oh, we actually see a micro war starting up here. Some of the spheres start to run in from Wham to take the fight, and Bill's Murder just gets out of there with the human arrow. He says, I don't want to take this. I don't want to, I don't want to tango here yet. We can get spheres to beat up and then, well, um, the other thing I was going to point out also is Wham made a second Imperial official who has been rising. So like, oh, oh God, the Khan. The Khan just died. Khan goes down, GG's in the chat, but that's actually huge because that allows Philly the vision, the knowledge, and just a little bit of extra damage here and there, but most importantly is the move movement arrow. Wham's taking the full fight. He has the Spearman numbers. The first Spear went down for Philly, and now this is where it's almost as good as over. He's going up with the Silver Tree, but Wham will continue this forward pressure. He's going to continue moving forward until he hits the Uvu. The barracks is going to have to run back, get under the town center, not be able to be double produced, not be on that Uvu. Yeah. The, well, I think, and I, I think that uh, we'll be able to see uh, Hardened Spearman come out fast enough for Hillsboro to make up for having a, a number down. Ah, uh, very... he's still down pretty significantly in these numbers. Even with the veterancy coming in, or Harden, sorry, not veterancy. Even with the Harden coming in, this makes it a difficult fight. But wham, he takes some damage. He was looking away a little bit. Hardened upgrade still not through yet. Good micro pulling back the lower hell spearman. Still no spears going down. Wham loses his first couple, and Philly loses a couple as well. But Uvu now is on fire. Uvu is about to go down and fight being taken now with the hardened upgrade but numbers are heavily on Wham's side still this is a winning fight for Wham yeah and Philly is just trying to rush up a rush up an archery range but like that's not going to be a double production range like that's going to be a single yeah. archer it's yeah and it takes a while to get the numbers you need meditation gardens being dropped near some wood near some stone near some berries so wham's about to start getting some passive production and still has those 13 spears for himself 14 spears for himself barracks trying to run gets out of uh gets out of harm's way wham should just pull these spears home regroup in feudal age now in a second and decide what he wants to do from there yeah the silver tree is finally in position at least so that's gonna be the start of good news the uvu is getting rebuilt by philly and like i don't think he's technically like i don't think he's that far behind honestly i think wham is about to drop castle in the next two minutes i he lost an uvu and he lost a lot of military philly's gonna have to produce what is that eight spears to equal out the numbers alone for the spearmen and by the time he does that wham's up he sent more villagers over to gold. You already talked about him having that extra IO, which I don't know. Oh, there it is. It's, it's Circle Iron Gathering Gold. So helping out that number just a little bit more. And lastly is how cheap that landmark is to end up going up. Yeah, I, I, um, I Oh my should... gosh, another Uvu goes down. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like I thought Phil's Berto had it and then like, this is going to be 450 wood to spend on Uvu, guys. I, th I think yeah, he, and he just stopped making village. He just stopped making spears too early, which is a very easy mistake to make in this matchup, having made this mistake as well uh, multiple times. But it's, it's I think losing the con was the first big drawback because he did have the numbers and then he didn't have the knowledge. He didn't have the information, so he didn't know what to do. So that's where I feel like he cut the production and was like, I'm running home and aging. And... The only way you can do that is if you get an outpost up on your Uru before that, or and your gold, because he actually had two different resources that Wham could have hit. Um, so kind of actually lucky that he didn't get full gold denied as well. Meanwhile, Wham, he's dropping an outpost on the gold. He's got enough to age up here in just a second. Meanwhile, Philsberto just took the military number lead. Uh, yeah, he's got enough. He is. Yeah, also, uh, there's two Mangadai out. I just want to 
throw that one there for you. And more in queue, but the Shaolin Monastery is on the way with 11 villagers, a stable's immediately on top, or right next to it, so this is the hard part, is what is Philsberto going to do without walls against the onslaught of Castle Age Lancers? Well, Castle Age Lancers in a very open map. So he's easy. trying to he's trying to trade boom two behind this and at trades immediately going to get denied. You can see monastery finishes should start to see some monks get produced. We also palace guards as well. So just going to use not only lancers but also some palace guards to just move on around, get some damage done. Yeah, this is. The third Uvu has been producing. It's 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 working. It's giving some stone, but that is still just a huge, huge feels bad. So many resources that were were taken down. Yeah. Um. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know what. I'm, I I'm on honestly. I don't. I don't see. Away I mean, the longer the trade boom starts happening, Phil's Berto, that's his way back in the game. He has his own way of economic scaling. It's it's the trade right now. He's not too far behind being able to drop Castle Age. So if Wham doesn't start kind of pushing forward, taking relics, then Philly is fine and clear. But we already see the first relic being brought back now. And Wham is wanting to push forward and try to get these units out of his side of the map and get back towards putting the pressure on. Yeah. Uh Manga are actually picking up most of these spears. Uh, they've killed two. Yeah, they're so annoying. <laughs> I'm so happy. Like, as the Mongol player, I'm happy to see oh, And there goes. Gone. Goes down. Um, Cal, if you're in chat, can we get, like, an animation for every time Phyllis Birdo goes down? Can, can we have that for the, for the land event? Um. Like Another con. manga die goes down over onto the berries, oh, and Wham oh, is now starting to push forward with the lancers while also again securing the relics. <laughs> it's hilarious. Look at look at what Philly's doing with this trade. He's going to either corner, so he's like, if you pressure the market, you're gonna get taken down whichever way you go. So at least if one side gets denied, he it won't fully cut off his income. Yeah, that's a yeah that that's a very rare play for you to see people. But like with how big Prairie is, like you can't cover both sides if you're trying to like, harass Ray. So it works out very well for this match. Oh my god, these Mangadai are gonna kill a Lancer. Yeah, I mean you got the movement speed. This is what I was talking about last game. Is if you utilize the whatever it was, if you the one against Cal. Um, if you utilize the movement speed correctly, you're never really able to efficiently deal with these Mangadai without outposts or walls. Well, we don't see a ton of outposts or walls, and when we do see the outposts, Philly is just circled back and ran away. Yep. Uh, the the horseman and the Lancer actually try to make their way into Philly's base, but we're just going to run into the Mangadai. Uh, and and now we spears. find the correct unit to take down those Mangadai is the horsemen they have that little bit of extra movement speed to be able to close the gap yeah uh they also have that at, you know the, the buff that they got in the most recent patch where they got that little bit of extra range also helps in this, in this exact scenario and then obviously they have the plus damage versus ranged and mangadai are ranged cavalry so that's where uh the ranged cab take extra damage Horsemen starting to take down some of the trade. Wham has the fourth relic now brought home, and uh, what is that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna see Yuan, Yuan Dynasty, and probably Palace Guard spam. Oh, by the way, there's a there's a curl guy. Um, what is Yuan Dynasty for for Zushi? Yes. Do? I've never I've never seen it. Pagodas. Oh, okay, right. Uh, I think it's similar, is it not? Is it? I could be wrong. I, I don't, don't know. I, I've, I've forgotten all the intricacies of it. Obviously, it unlocks the, um... Alright, chat, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, like, go back into the regular... Units are cheaper. There we go. That's what uh, Askeloth says. Units, units are cheaper? That seems really good. Um, especially when combined with Pagodas. Uh, honestly, I'm 
I'm really quite surprised considering on how Wham went for a very fast castle, how he's only killed one trader this entire game. Look at how quick, but he didn't focus on the trade. I find sometimes people care too much about the trade too early. He's like, yeah, you can have some trade. You can build up a little bit of an eco lead. I'll start denying it, idling and damaging it soon enough. And I'm going to take these relics, take the sacred sites, take all of these passive resources. That's now those pagodas, those, it, it is crazy how much resource, hover over the pagoda and hover over each resource on what it's producing. And you're about to just be appalled. 62 food, 62 wood, 100 gold, and 25 food. Yeah. I hate this. It's, I hate it's, this. it's crazy when you think about it. Each pagoda is basically, what is that, 250 resources just about? So now when he drops those relics inside of there, they're just flowing in all those other resources. And now is when he denies the trade. Now is when he starts producing more military, continue the harassment, continue the annoyance. And the numbers for Phil uh, Phil's bear though should start dropping instead of climbing as fast as they are. You, you want to know what the worst, craziest part about the uh, Pagoda is? It costs 150 wood, so it pays for itself in less than a minute. Like, that's insane to that's insane to think about. And I mean, it's crazy when you just hover over and you see some of the ticks come in and you're like, oh my gosh, all right. That's a crazy amount of resources. Spearmen were sitting on the silver tree, but Mangadai, use, utilizing their movement speed, able to clear those on up. Another market got dropped, and it's not just one, uh, not just two. It's three markets. We said his way back in this game is trade booming, and I guess he agrees. That's not trade booming. That's like nuclear trade. That is that is insane. I've never seen anybody go for four markets like this this quickly. Mangadai are able to get a couple villager picks. Will lose their lives. Well, actually, they don't even end up losing their lives. They just take a little bit of poke damage and continue firing and continue running. That is absurd. Uh, they're about to get a lot more than a few villagers. He's about to find the wood one. Oh my gosh. Mangadai. Are they good? No, or I don't do want them to walls? be. You just need walls. That's their biggest counter. <laughs> Look at how many oh, villagers That was four out. villagers. It, but the, he, but this he is just, it, he was just running by. He wasn't even doing anything. But this is very, you can't build walls. Like there's not um, enough wood to build walls. I'm actually starting to get a little scared for Wham. So am I. He's about to get doubled up on economy. And let's like, let's be honest. Trade is better than villagers. I mean, like, it's not Mongol just the economy. It's it's the Mangadai number that it's. Oh, he has Mangadai's, twenty-one Mangadai. They might be doing some damage in Castle. Elite Mangadai are a whole different ball game, but Wham, he is starting to produce more and more. He doesn't have any sort of granary transition or food transition yet, but neither does Phil's Berto. So both players are really on to these pocket ecos which is, I would say, more beneficial for Wham, since it's a little bit easier for him to deal with this, but Philsberto has the, the unit that controls the map better. Yeah, and... Um, Wham is, send, Wham and is sending there a crossbow. there is... To nice, Imperial? But, uh, uh, okay. No, that's Song. That's Song. Okay, so yeah. So now we're going back to Song Dynasty. Uh, no, it still says... Mm, I'm pretty sure it goes back downgrade. to song. I'm pretty sure you go back to whatever. We'll see. Um, okay. Now, now I'm. Now I'm just. Now I'm just yeah. No. It's gonna. If we go back to song, it's because he he needs to make the farm transition. We do go back. So I thought you couldn't yeah. degrade. No. You you always go into what whatever dynasty you end up building next. So this actually makes a lot of sense. It allows him the farm transition. I was just saying is about to be a worry. Wham also isn't too worried about Mangadai. He has enough for a keep. Once you drop a keep, they can't get close to that. But look at this trade route. Wham hasn't spotted this in a while. Right as the spears got cleared up, that was when Phil's Barito dropped three markets. And we're at 94 to 54 now. It is it is full trade boom. Yeah, there are... Oh god, Wham is... Wham, you oh, madman. Do you see this keep outline? Though. They're running towards the Mangadai mass, but there's some horsemen here to be that frontline tank, and there's not a lot of... Uh, well, there's spears somewhere, but they're not here for Phil's Berto. 
movement speed inside of the tower radius and the TC range. Now, it's actually not the worst fight for Philsberto. Uh, Philsberto is also on the back and killing, uh, killing villagers. Um, Wamp try is trying to put, has a heat blueprint on the trade, like on the silver. Oh, he is indeed. There's an outpost there, but it's not upgraded. There's not a lot of units that are on top of that, but it could get scouted out if the villagers get there. And the oh no, just the villagers are running right by a traitor. Oh no. They're running right by a traitor. They're going to get spotted out. They get, they're, they're in vision right now. Philsberto can see them all. The question is, is, is he going to react to it? He sends one Mangadai. He sends some spears. Those villagers are all dead. Oh my god. This is crazy. And those Mangadai are still on the backside running, still trading efficiently enough. Worker kills are coming down on both sides, but oh, it's just oh, way oh, it like the mass one mass showed opening. up. Mangadai mass just showed up. The keep is completely dead. Keep goes down, villagers go down, last couple palace um, guards in the base of Philsberto go down, and Philsberto has that full trade boom online, and oh my, he does not just have a few traders, his trade amount is wild. He has more traders than Wham has economy, and that includes, uh, that includes, um, uh, IOs. But can Philsberto push the base? Because his army mass he has now is not a mass to end the game. It's a mass to extend, a mass to delay. Well, Wham's getting to the point where he's dropping a keep. He's making the granary transition. He's dropped a second town center now. I wouldn't even be too far off to see him drop a third town center in the near future. Oh, I think he definitely has to. What can the Mangadai do now? There's there's three, four outposts at, at, at home base. There's a keep. They can't run in now. This is the problem with Mangadai, is, is once the walls come up, once the outpost comes up, the keeps comes up, they're as good as dead. I, th I think that's fine, though. Like, oh god, the Mangadai actually, speaking of a keep, the Mangadai just found dead. Um, yeah, they've just been, they, I think we've seen four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the Mangadai are going to die now. So Philsberto just lost his military advantage he has. He needs to hopefully get a lot of villager picks here. Uh, he's at 21, 22 currently, so we'll see if he manages to get anywhere. Uh, he's actually he's actually coming up and uh, shutting down the meditation card. Yeah, and but. those horsemen are actually not doing as much damage as I thought. The pathing issue makes it to where they're just slowly hitting horse or hitting single Mangadai here and there, and not really effectively able to circle, effectively able to get enough damage in. Yeah, like a lot of the Mangadai have died, but like they've just. Look, look at the trail of bodies, man. Does Philsberto go imp soon? No. Oh my gosh, Maybe? he's just getting yam network. What? This is such an oversight not to have with that many traders. Um, yam network. Uh, yam network already. Oh, affects oh it counts for traders. I forgot. And now it accounts to military units too. Uh, yeah, well, no, 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 no. I was, no, I was no. thinking reverse. No, no, no. Yam network. Or sorry. Towers for Mongols affect. Trade and cavalry. Yam network affects villagers and infantry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was so, getting it reversed. Yeah, not not yeah. having so, it doesn't matter. Not having yeah, it doesn't the, matter. The eco, the small villager eco that he has helps, but he is now making the pasture transition he needs, so the vulnerable food, the exposed resources won't be as big of a deal. Palace guards that move forward easily cleaned up because now we're seeing veteran Keshix come into play. We're seeing those premium units because he has so many resources that he wants to make the high value units that are hard to trade with and look at how effective they are at that front line now. Well, and the other thing is, is, you know, Keshix aren't quite knights, but palace guard aren't quite men at arms either. Like, them not being as tanky as a regular knight isn't actually as important compared to, like, if you're fighting for two knights. Or, uh, and like look at how arms. many outposts have started to be set up on this trade line, have started to be upgraded with these sprinkled emplacements because of how much income Phil's Berto has coming in. Another two spring on emplacements on the trade line. Wham sees the massive amount of traders, but this is where, do you focus the traders? Do you focus the tower? By the time you take down a couple of these traders, they're already rebuilt and you've lost all your horsemen you just raided with. 79 traders, 80 traders. 
it's just see so he's making them faster than they're falling from this horseman mass and now he clears up this mass again he's got 20 Keshix now I 20 Keshix I I don't I don't know man I don't so now he's starting to get the mask that can dive the base, that can dive economy. But Wham has fully finished these walls. The front side of the walls are the last thing left, but there's no units near there. Kashyyyk can't keep, or uh, the, the Mangadai can't keep running through. So I would really expect the full transition into Kashyyyk crossbow or Keshik archer or some actual infantry backline unit instead of the Mangadai. I yeah. The movement value isn't there anymore. You're not going to get open spaces. You're not going to be able to, to really get into eco. White stoop is coming down. We're going to see hand cannons. Um, Phyllis Berto has thrown down 1,800 meters. And his economy is so much gold. He has 4,400 gold a minute. That is insane. <laughs> that's more resources than any of Wham has, and that's not even including the food and the, the, the wood and anything else. That, that is more than Cash Wham has per minute to total. Yeah. Like, I have never seen that number ever reach for Gold Man, and I have watched a lot of this game. Like, this is insane. And, but he has so much gold that he can, like, buy food. Like, it is very easy for him to have a gold uh, food army, and that's what hand cannons are. And he has eight archery ranges to support hand cannons. He's getting incendiary arrows, though. So I think. Never he's mind. Stand on I don't know anything. I think he's going. I think he... he's just staying on Mangadai for the movement and just kind of reacting to any attempted denial of the trade because he's gonna have full vision. If you click the fog of Worky, oh, no. he already has full vision of the map. It's wild looking at it. That is, yeah, that's that's just insane. I. Oh. That's what happens when you got the, the extra resources. You just start setting up outposts anywhere and everywhere, and then you're able to proactively react to everything. He's getting all of these upgrades in, and oh my god, stone commerce is the scary one. 10% stone to all trades. Oh, oh. But you we know how strong remember. stone is for the Mongols. Phil's Berto's max pop, so all of that economy just gets that much more efficient. Don't don't worry, chat. You need to have at least 20 traders for stone commerce to kick in as an upgrade. I don't know if Phil's Berto has that much. Oh wait. Biology is coming in, and when you have Keshix and Mangadai, bi biology, massive to get on through. Yeah, this is. Oh man, I don't. Like, Wham is just concentrating to on this right side. I'd actually like to see more, even more outposts on the current trade route. It's like, you might as well drop a few more instead of some out in the midst of nowhere. Oh, by the way, there was Lancers a Temple of the Sun up so much. Oh, Keshik's taking the fight in the center of the map. Mangadai aren't too far away, and they do have their incendiaries through. Look at those Lancers disappear from Mangadai. This is a fight that Phil's Berto wants. This is a fight that Phil's Berto takes, and all the Lancers fall. Spears step up. Phil's Berto still can take it with the Keshiks because he's got the back line, and those Mangadai are firing like machine guns. Oh, my gosh. I don't even think... Um, this is you can't go for the trade anymore like I feel like there's no way to stop the trade at this point with how much there is you by the time you take it down your units die and the trade's still alive yeah it's th this is honestly insane I don't know I don't think there is a way that you can, a, a way that you can kill this but uh, one thing that we haven't mentioned is uh, Wham did go up to Imperial he like, got the temple and stuff, so at least he has that, I think. And I, I love the, I love what spear, what he's, what Wham's doing. It's just spears, spears, and spears. It's a trash composition, but all Phil's Berto is making is calves. So it's the correct unit, and it's cheap and easy to make, easy to mass produce. Stone walls are coming through as well, so it's gonna force Phil's Berto to move on to siege, which he hasn't even gotten close to thinking about. Yeah, well, and Phil's Berto doesn't have any wood. Well, I mean, I guess he can hide. Um, but yeah, he doesn't have he doesn't have uh, any any wood income to be able to afford siege because he's making so many outposts and so many traders. Because that is a you know, 
know, a gold heavy or a wood heavy unit. Mm -hmm. 105 traders, 53 villagers as well. So he's way over boomed. He doesn't have the military numbers really to clean this up super, super easy. Yeah, he's, he is, Villasberto is in the spot where he basically has to fight with the units as he replaces them. And that is super uncomfortable. But like the army shows up, all of these spearmen are about to get wiped out. And I think that after that, I don't think there's going to actually be any Atlantic units on uh, Wham, the, the, Wham is just map. playing the distraction game, but push, pull, push, pull, send a unit to the east, send a unit to the north, send a unit to the east, send a unit mass to the north, and he hasn't been touched for the past 10 minutes, it feels like. Yep. Um, oh, the uh, Mongol Towers got upgraded. They actually have uh, a little bit of fire armor now. Aha, uh -huh, this makes things a lot more difficult, and there are so many towers on this backline trade now. They're all upgraded with sprinkles or cannons. Spearmass trying to deny that last tower from going up on the east, trying to start burning the uh, Springle Tower. And actually, that Springle Tower takes a little bit more damage than I was expecting. It's 16 spears, so quite a bit of torches. And manga dies aren't, aren't close enough to, to take those out before necessary. So east side of the trade route has now been fully set up and, and denied. Spears are taken down and just nonstop firing, doing damage. Keshik's arriving to clear up the spear mass. Yeah, this is going to be a very inefficient fight for this window, but I don't think he really cares. Like, honestly. Spear mass will be cleared up. It has been cleared up. There's also another set of spears that have been getting taken down by the Manganai in the west. Gold's yeah. attempting to be taken. There's a cannon emplacement that's about to finish on that outpost. It's not too far away. Oh, it's not, it's not going to go up. In time. It's not, not going to go up in time. Villagers yeah. do get spotted out though. Mangadai are on the way. And I don't know if Wham has enough units here to, to defend this keep from going up here. Spearman gonna go try to deny the tower. Mangadai arriving. Yeah, uh, I think if Phil's Berto just dives this, I think, I think like, Phil's can Manga. take down the, the, can deny this keep fully. Oh, another set oh. of spears arrive. He actually cannot step forward. Wham's running away. He's not protecting the keep. Keshik's aren't circling around either. Mangadai ignoring the keep, so keep will go up. Next set of gold secure, and it should help secure that sacred site. Yeah, that, that, that keep is a very, very well placed. It does a lot of things. Um, oh my God, there's just so many things on the map. I can't keep up, chat. Well, it, that's what happens when Philsberto sends eight villagers out to build eight outposts all throughout different spots of the map. And this is actually a detriment to him. Instead of consolidating, focusing, narrowing his, his focus to certain spots, he's spreading himself thin and losing outposts, losing resources, losing a lot of value. But certain spots, I will say, are, are way reinforced. It's just spears, spears, and spears, though, from Wham. It, that is it. Yeah. Well, and the other the other thing about the amount of outposts that he's building is he's actually ending he doesn't have the wood to make his outposts and he doesn't have the wood to make anything else like he has to use gold golden uh units because he just yeah and you can't forget as well with the temple of the sun these spears are speedy boys that's what makes up for the the lack of yuan speed is they have uh the speed from the temple of the sun so that's why you can see right, them moving out and about Wham! Investing into some stone walls on this west side, it's going to make it harder and harder for Philsberto to to control this map like he has been for so long. Uh, the stone walls won't go up. The one of the towers is yep, one of the towers is a problem. Oh. So, like, that stops it. Maybe like if Wham really wants to, he could get it. Uh, um, oh, we have a siege workshop. We finally, have a siege workshop. Yep. Look at the upgrades coming through for Philsberto. You mean the tower that just... <laughs> it's not another keep, it's another tower, and another uh, tower, and another tower. And uh, now they're cannon emplacements instead of sprinkled, so when you're going with these groups of spears, they're going to be way less effective unless you're using spread formation. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Daphne, do, 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 are you familiar with, like, 40k at all, out of curiosity? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know if you know the phrase, big guns never tire. Ah, yeah. Yeah, like, 
bring out the big guns, and that's what these ki that's what these towers are. It's just nothing but big guns. Oh my gosh. Eight Speaking at a time. of big guns, those Chinese keeps got some big guns on them, taking out some Mangadai that were going for some raiding. Some more attempted circling around with those spears from Wham again on the eastern side too. Um, did you notice that Phillisberto has just a bunch of towers on Wham side of the map, like behind this, behind this keep? Yeah, he was. He's had two villagers that are one or two villagers that have just slowly been reinforcing over that side. So again, it's it's this full map control denial that Phil's Berto is going for. Is it going to be a game that that Wham loses because he runs out of the wood? I, I think really so. think it could be. And I, he's never going to get trade. He's never going to get trade either. Um, but yeah, most of the wood on Wham, Wham's side of the map is actually under all of these towers in this uh, bottom left hand side, and. Like, yeah, Wham has keeps, but eventually he's going to have to play. Oh, look at what he's doing, though. He's uh, making it to where now Philsberto has to deal with the towers, has to defend those up because he's doing just rams getting made from the siege workshop, sending them at the tower. Yeah, that is that is definitely the right answer. It's definitely the right thing to do. Um, uh, Bombard more comes and out. more outposts coming up from Phil's Berto. He's not paying attention to the ra Actually, yes, he is. The elite Keshiks are coming forward, and he's starting to try to take down the Western Keep on that gold as well. So Phil's Berto, it actually looks like he's slowly starting to make some progress, whereas five minutes ago or so, it felt like Wham was breaking out of it. Wham was starting to make the progress. Yeah, this is... This game has been so insane. Dude. How many Mangadai do you think that uh, Phyllis Berto has made? Again, I'm just going to go back to the fact that look at the vision now. Oh, is yeah. go back to Phil's Berto's vision. He's getting a line across the center of the map. Soon enough, they're slowly going to be upgraded with cannon emplacements in the center now instead of just on the trade line. So a little bit of a five horseman raid, seven horseman raid, it can't get close to where it needs to be. Keep on the west from Wham starting to fall as well. Villagers trying to heal it up. Keshiks, there's a dove, and those villagers all will go down. That keep will go down. Wham loses another spot on the map, but he's moved out on the east. He's dropped a keep over there, too. Well, yeah, and not only does he lose, you know, 3,000 gold here in his mine, but that's also two siege workshops. And again, there's that 600 wood on a map with the He only has yeah. 500 a minute or 600 a minute. And, and that's probably majority from the pagodas. You got, I think, probably a 200 wood per minute is from the pagodas alone. Uh, um, so, yeah, that that's where the wood is definitely a scary situation. And not only is it now the western side wood that's being denied, it's also the wood that's in the middle, in the center, that's right in front of his base, too. Oh, my gosh. Look at what he's been doing behind this, though. It's no know. longer spears. Oh, that's a lot. Of... I forget this unit exists. That is a lot, a lot of UN Raiders. Um, that's an, yeah. An I... impressive amount. And again, look at Phil's Berto's eco. He is so overboomed right now. Uh, look at, look at Phil's Berto's base. There's a wonder. Oh my God. I. Uh, what? What? I mean, this wonder's so dead. There's. I don't care. This wonder. The UN Raiders will just run and burn this. This is so stupid. Well, he doesn't know the UN Raiders are coming. It doesn't matter. This is the dumbest. Th he didn't even drop it near outpost. At least drop it in the corner behind your eight outposts that you made. Actually, yeah. there's a spot in the trade where there's literally. It would be seven outposts surrounding it in the middle of the trade yeah, line. Like, like why yeah. not just drop it there? Yeah. But the Yuan wonder. Raider mass is there. And again, Phil's Berto is at 173 eco. He can't make military. Oh, no. Okay, so the plan is, is that Phil's Berto deletes half of his trade. 
and just uh, makes but units. Philsberto knows about the UN play now. Like, look, he has full vision of it. He sees, okay, you have 85 UN Raiders. Oh, shit. Um, I have 28 total military units to deal with this, and I I don't know what he's going to do. Wham might actually just go for a straight-up snipe here. And now, instead, he's actually going for some outposts. This is a big win for Philsberto. The outpost it delaying him time, stalling him up. He Not needs to that. continue to make these veterans or these elite Keshiks that he has. Hand Cannoneers as well, but those are UN Raiders. They're like Cav. The, the Hand Cannoneers aren't helping here. You need Spears. He's making, he's pumping Hand Cannoneers. Like yeah, that's not good. But that UN Raider number, they're getting thinned out pretty quickly. There's a ton of Keshiks that have just jumped out. Villagers are pull, being pulled off of the food. They're going to try to help heal that Wonder. That Wonder is very low already. There's so many torches there, but this is so many resources now that, that Wham is losing is from the UN Raiders. He's got a ton in queue. Tons of Villagers trying to heal up the Wonder, trying to keep it alive. Insufficient, Insufficient wood. wood! Insufficient wood. No, no, you can repair again. He bought, it. he bought it! He bought it! Oh, it stayed alive! It stays alive with the market. He buys the wood just in time and what? Wonder stays up. There's still oh two minutes left. There's zero outposts around it. The UN Raider number fully resets here. What? I'm having oh heart palpitations. God. I can't do this, chat. He needs to go back on the sheep. He has. He needs to. Oh my. At least he has the trade. But these villagers now are sitting here. You don't need to repair with 50 villagers. Repair with like two or three and. Where is he going to get the wood, though, now? Oh, God. And now it's even worse. I thought those were Yuan Raiders he was replacing with. They are Imperial Guards, so now it's the Heavy Cav. Now the Hand Cannoneers will make sense. You, Wham's constantly keeping Phil's Berto on the back foot, not knowing how to react or what to react with. Well, the good news for Phil's Berto is he does have Hand Cannoneers, and he does have Chemistry. And he does have vision, and I think that is the biggest key, is he knows when and where to react to. So as long as he's using these Keshiks, has them in production, he can constantly outmaneuver where Wham is going. So Wham realizes that, he's trying to burn down these outposts, trying to take down as many as he can, slowly but surely. And he, I love it, he just gets them on fire and immediately moves to the next, because there's no villagers near. Yep, you know, it makes perfect sense. And there's four Imperial Guards running around. And like they're taking pot shots, but I don't think it matters. Although at the same time, well, Phil's Berto is just throwing outposts and outposts and outposts around his corner. He recognizes yeah, what Wham's to gold that he just moved out to has a cannon emplacement on top of it. He's moving out to that eastern side trade, but look at how many cannon emplacements are there! These, I mean, yeah, these palace guards feel great, but you just lost five, six of them, and you can't start taking down that trade again. Villagers ran away from the gold. Wham is still on the back foot somewhat, but trying to press forward, trying to take back the vision, take back the map control. I mean, the thing is, though, is like, even if Wham kills like the trade, that's fine. Phyllis Birdo's overbuilt. Like, he's only now at 135. He was at 170 earlier. Like, losing trade isn't bad for him. It's actively good. Yeah, there's still now 28 Imperial Guards that are getting pretty close to the Eco, getting pretty close to the Wonder. But finally, he moves. He gets some outposts over near the Wonder. Villagers oh, moving around the yet the again. Sim City is stopping the, Palace Guard, the Imperial Guard from getting on top of the base. They can't actually move past on how, on how congested this area is. And as soon as these cannons come up, they're they're gone. And all the Keshiks oh just arrived, so he's at least got a front line. He's got the cannon emplacements on the outpost. Stalling that out, but look at the mid-map. Wham has been able to start gaining re-control of the mid-map. There's still 10 minutes left on the Wonder. We are a third of the way there, and there is a lot of time left. Yeah, I mean, like, Wham, ha Wham is starting to regain control, but, like, I, I just, I don't know. It's, it Phil's still seems so needs rough. more room for military. I really think he needs to delete some traders. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's only... He's at the point where he's got 25 Keshiks in queue. They're just waiting, watching. Imagine if he had 85 military units out. He's taking way better trades to where he doesn't need more units, and the towers are actually being effective. But 
takes another fight, does have the reinforcements from the towers, does have the reinforcements from all of the production near the curl tie, but it's not enough. He needs more units there. Another outpost getting lower. More Imperial Guards on the way, though. It's just Wham is just nonstop sending the onslaught in. And I feel like Filsberto still just doesn't have the numbers here. Yeah, I I don't think he... I don't think he can have the numbers. I think he's kind of... I think he's limited on production building. Actually, with he's, he's overboomed. He's, he's got 37 Keshiks in queue. You need more production, and you need more space. Imperial Guards, though, it seems like they're starting to run lower and lower. Wham has been shoveling these units in, and yeah, he's got 13 in queue, but he no longer has 60 out on the map. He's actually losing steam. Is Phil's Berto doing this? He's getting time to breathe, and time to breathe with... An overboomed eco means more outposts, more emplacements, and then maybe it's all the long game. Then he deletes it. He, then he replaces the the missing queue. Yeah, this guy. I still talk about stuff. Well, and, and is There's so many strong. outposts on the east side that by the time the ram gets to the front outpost, it's already at like half health from outposts. Oh my god. I, that's new, you know, like, I like how the cash is like run over to help and it's like, why? Yeah, you didn't, you didn't even need do anything, there. dude. So Wonder Victory is still on the way. There's a few outposts next to the Wonder that he really could use upgrades on. Um, they're about half, one's halfway built. Looks like he had to garrison up some units, but he's finally dropping more production. Thank God. We've seen the queue be massive. We've seen him have the pop space. He hasn't had the production, and it's because he spent so much wood on towers and not production space. Yep. And the but trade's finally being focused. I feel like this is too late. At this point, Phil's Berto's happy about this. Take down the trade. Take the resources. You got seven minutes to take down the wonder. Yeah, this is actively benefiting. Berto this is right exactly here. what Phil's Berto needs. He can't actually kill the trade though. Like it's healing. Even if he takes it out, it's again the the, the Imperial Guards are starting to fall. But it pulled all of Phil's Berto's military over here. The hand cannoneer mass is over here as well. It was just a big bait and switch, I think. Keshiks, though, are still produced near near that spot. The front side towers are helping out, and and just enough units are there to push off the reinforcing mass as well. Well, just enough units and also just enough towers. Keep in mind, there are like it's seven or eight uh, towers around the monument of three gone. Like, there's no Is way to... Phil's Berto doing this? Six minutes left, and it's still looking like he is in a great position. About... I would say at the 10 minute mark on the wonder, it really felt like Wham was taken down a lot. He's taken down all of the outposts in the center of the map. So he has gained ground there, but Phil's Berto's doubled down in the base. He's got production. He's replaced a couple of the, the fallback points he had and actually has space for military finally. Instead of being at 150, 170 economy, he's sitting more at the 130 level. I still would like to see it even lower than that, but hey, maybe he's just letting the letting it happen naturally with the trade. Another Imperial Guard dive. So, there's so many hand cannoneers this time. So there's many 30, hand 25 cannoneers, hand so cannoneers many behind this that are shredding this. Wham, I, this is not a fight he can take. I don't think there is a fight Wham can take anymore. I think, I think we're. I think he's. I think the game's over. Like it's gonna take five more minutes, but it's over. I'm just shocked he never tried to draw. I mean, I guess he could never really feel like he could go into siege except for Rams because he. It's just he didn't have that consolidated military force he could deal with. There's five minutes left. More outpost on the front side, but even if Wham dives this, look at his eco. He's so hurt right now. He's sitting at 150 pop. Yeah, this is. I I I don't I don't know. Like I don't I don't. 
I just, this is the testament of a vision and knowledge because right when Wham pulled back from that trade route is when we saw the triple market get dropped. And we were like, oh my God, we said yeah. the way in this is the trade boom. He did it right when Wham lost, lost vision. And then all of a sudden, by the time the next time Wham saw it, it was at 50 traders. He was down 40 economy behind that. And at that point, it's hard to stabilize. It's hard to get back in it yourself. He's building up for one finalized push, but look at how much slower the buildup now is compared to before. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that the I think that the only way that Wham has back in this game, and I think it's too late. I don't think four minutes is enough. He's getting the nest of bees. He's okay. going with some yeah. siege. He's got to try to get the hand cannon seen. ears. But again, Philsberto at this point, look at his Q. He could have another 80 units out on the field. Just just do it. It's one final push that Wham has, and, and you're good. If you hold this push, you win the game. He's got a lot still in bank. He's got a lot still in queue. Delete villagers. Delete traders. Yeah, Come I on. Think, do, it. Trade do it. Do <laughs> it. Yeah, I think deleting trade is definitely great. Um, this is just completely and totally over the top. I can't, I can't imagine playing with 170 minutes. eco units at any time. And he, he's finally doing what he needed to do. He's dropping more outposts around the actual wonder rather than the front side. So this means if Wham takes like a circular path and somehow gets around and through the vision, by the time those palace uh, Imperial guards get on top of the, the monument of the Great Khan, there's going to be eight, nine cannon and placed outposts around it. That there's, there's no cleaning it at this point, I don't think. Uh, we did hear the three minute bell. Uh, Scout runs up, sees the army for Wham. He knows, Philosberto knows everything. Like that scout There's himself. seven, eight, eight Nesta Bs now. Oh. So, okay. so we talked about, and this is what I'm talking about. Wham knows what he needs to do. He has to do this all in one foul swoop. Win the fight heavy enough that then when the reinforcing units come in, he has still so much better numbers. He's still taking more efficient trades there where it doesn't matter about his reinforcements. And that's what he's trying to do here. Set nine nest of bees. Is this going to be enough? Look at the look at the Keshex. He's waiting. He's trying to get a flank in with the Keshex. Phil's Berto circling back around because he has the vision. He still has the knowledge because of these outposts on the side. He sees the nest of bees pushing up. He sees the palace guards. Right when they step a little bit too far forward, he's going to circle with the Keshex. He's, he's ready and waiting. Wham's pulling villagers. A minute and 40 seconds. Wham has to push. He doesn't have the time to wait with this. And look at the cannon placements. They're just shredding. They're making all the pal Imperial guards take damage. It even takes down a nest of bee. Yeah, one of the... Oh, God. Oh my god, the wood line! The villagers on the wood line now get taken down by the outpost as well! I think, I think we're about to see Phyllis Berto pull all of his villagers onto the, onto the uh... Ram's trying to go for that circle we talked about, but there's just cannon emplacements everywhere! Phyllis Berto is doing what we said, he's down to 68 economy! He's still leading the economy, replacing it with, with military, he knows this is it! 60 it is seconds! Never one minute left! Oh my god, it's the one, like, I, ah! The flip I don't... comes around, Philsberto's taking the dive, Nestebe's firing on Keshix, that doesn't matter, Philsberto's happy with that, Hand Cannoneer starting to shred the mask, Villagers being pulled to Phil's heal Berto the Nestebe's, it is now or never, fight going in and Wham's numbers are thinning, Wham's numbers are falling, but Nestebe's, unbelievable shots on the Hand Cannoneers, will they be replaced fast enough? It doesn't matter, Philsberto deleted all of his trades. He has no trade. seconds left. He's, Phil's Berto still has 7,000 food in the bank. He still has the unit mass. He still has the numbers. He's on top of the nest of bees. Phil's Berto is doing it. Taking down one of the Canadian bros. Wham is falling to a wonder victory. Oh my god. Oh. I am speechless. And you said the wonder was a bad idea. It was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was a bad idea. No, okay. Okay, so unironically, unironically, unironically. Um, <laughs> unironically, the thing about the wonder is there was no way that uh, that Wayne was going to get broken if 
Felix Berto tried to like push into the Zushi base where the keeps and the stone walls were and everything like that. So the way that Felix Berto had to finish the game was to use like the ridiculous, let us let me emphasize the word ridiculous economy that he had in order to get the wonder and basically say, you have to come to me instead of me tr just bashing my head against a wall that I'm, I can't break. Go, Where he go to placed economy it. count, because you will see how long Philsberto was overboomed, but he constantly kept the pressure up. He constantly kept Wham behind because it was an all-cav army. It was Keshix, it was Mangadai, and Wham did not wall until, like, it felt like the 35th minute of the game. Like, it was a while that the raids were happening. It's really what caused a lot of this delay. You can see kind of at that 15-minute mark, Wham's economy was getting hurt, dipping, diving, and falling, whereas Phil's Perto had that straight line up. And what a freaking game. 55 minutes. He had 25,000 gold at one point. See, Askeladd, I'm with you there, too. That that 20-minute straight mark where he is has the maxed-out population, he has the, the unit count lead, he just didn't have the unit count to pressure the base, but he never chose to do it. Like I said, he always had about 10 to 15 units spreading out, taking building towers that were constantly dying. So it was like kind of this pro and con game where it was just push-pull, but the way that he played it worked, and so I... Who cares? It doesn't matter I mean, what I think. It matters what happened. I mean, not just that, but like the other thing. The other thing is, is like the other thing to kind of say here is, this is such a Phyllisberto style of playing the game. Like you would never see Marine Lord build a wonder on rare again. Never in a million fucking and years. You would never I'm see also Wham do. It. So hyped with this being in this kind of show match of a game where you know now this shows the tournament where it's not just gonna be these easy. 100% wipe games as yeah maybe Wayne was trying a new strat maybe he was trying something different but it just shows you can't let your opponent be on that comfort pick be on that comfort sieve